for you. Let us talk. You know, everybody we have on the show, we also have on our uh, website yeah. all the info. So for the film and CDs and other artists you're going to see tonight, you can also find the information on our website. On our website. Facebook, Q the whole nine yards. Right. TV. Okay, so... Qtalk.tv. Right? <laughs> yes, Q you got it TV. right. <laughs> I can't believe she got it right. I practiced it. I'm, yeah. While in Rome, right? Yes, while in exactly. Rome. Monjaro no Principesa. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, so there's been a lot of stuff going on, you know, in New York as far as marriage equality and all of that good stuff. But there's been a lot of things co going on in sports. Everybody is coming out in sports. There's a professional uh, bowler that just came out. There's like an ESPN <laughs> know, right? host, radio really? host. That I, just you probably came didn't out. need to actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bowling really is exactly. a sport. Good question. Uh, it's not a, <laughs> a sport. sport. <laughs> um, <laughs> foosball. Foosball. Oh. There you go. Um, and, Excellent. And I just played some foosball we, in Key West. Isn't that fun, though? Love foosball. Um, and a lot of these sports figures are coming out and supporting, especially with New York, that you know, marriage equality is coming on the ballot and everything. A lot of these sports players that are in New York coming in and supporting gay marriage and everything. Uh, our next guest has been basically at the forefront of this and really reaching out to all of these sportsmen and really trying to get equality in sports going. He is a three-time NCAA Division I All-American wrestler. Don't, aren't you impressed that I know that? NCAA Division I. Frankie, see, I know about He's sports. He's reading it off the card. Exactly. Oh, um, <laughs> He's um, also a Columbia University wrestling coach. He's one of the top five pinners. We're going to ask about that. <laughs> In NCAA history. We're not going to ask. We're going to make him do it. <laughs> Exactly. Um, and he's currently training with an eye on the Olympics. He's also founder of Athlete Ally. And please welcome. Please. Well, wait, hold on. Please welcome the deliciously heterosexual <laughs> Hudson Taylor. Hudson Taylor, come on up. Ladies and gentlemen. I got it, Andy. Come, like come, come, come. Are we, are we, we're oh, a little... Oh, look at Mr. Oh, Professional. I okay. know. He, he can just unwind cords in the whole nine you yards. You just grab that it. mic. So, Hudson. See, I told you that he was delicious. Hudson, Hudson, Hudson. And just so you guys know, he is straight, because in the audience is his fiance. See, right over there, Leah. <laughs> look at her. She's like, right here. <laughs> Hello. Bitches. So, Hudson... <laughs> see... There you, you go. See? Oh, show in the ring. Matching rings, right? Um, so, Hudson, thanks for coming down. Thanks You're very, me. it's very kind of you to come down. So, tell us about Athlete Ally. Uh, well, about five months ago, um, I started this nonprofit organization to really try to educate, uh, encourage, and empower uh, the straight athletes, or hopefully the straight allies. Um, to really speak out and do something about homophobia and transphobia in sports. Um, so, yeah. yeah in, excellent. Uh, in the past couple months, you know, I've just tried to do everything I can uh, uh, towards that end. Um, starting to speak at schools and uh, have a pledge on athleteally.org and uh, really just trying to encourage everybody to do what they can in um, whatever way that is. And you've been awarded quite a bit recently because of your efforts. Uh, let me just read it off my card because it's quite a bit. Um, P Flag gave him an award in uh, March 2011 for Straight for Equality in Sports. The Advocate dubbed you uh, Top 150 Reasons to Have a Gay Pride in 2010. And ESPN said he's the most exciting wrestler what is it? Exciting wrestler in the world? <laughs> so, I don't know. Yeah, see? He's the most exciting <laughs> wrestler in the world. Remember when I talked about world. the top five pin <laughs> thing? There you go, exactly. So listen, with all of this, what's your passion? I mean, what's the fire that, what motivated you to start this? Was it because there's a lot of homophobia in wrestling? I mean, which yeah. there is, kind there, of. There is, I mean, in all there sports. There is, right? Sure. 
Um, I mean, I think for a long time I wasn't an ally. I wasn't an advocate. This wasn't an issue that um, really moved me to action. For a long time, I was pretty complacent. And um, in locker room after locker room, on team after team, um, I just sat back and, you know, as my teammates and friends um, used homophobic and derogatory language. And uh, that was the reality for the majority of my life. Um, it wasn't until I got to the University of Maryland, uh, where I actually started as a theater major. And, yeah, yeah, go Terps. Um, yeah. And it, it was there that I, uh, I had friends and classmates who started to come out. Um, and you know, maybe one, two uh, people each, each month would come out to the class. They'd stand up, they'd say, you know, I have an announcement. Aww. I'm gay. And it was a joyous celebration. Um, and it was something that was really unique for me to see because I never had a teammate who had come out. I never um, really knew anybody in the LGBT community. So uh, that was... Or so you thought. Or so, I, well, exactly, right. exactly. I, I never knew anybody who was out. Right. Um, and that moment and seeing that uh, really affected me so that when I went back across the campus, uh, down into the locker room a few hours later, and uh, heard my teammates, heard the people who I should be closest to, the people who I should be most aligned with, um, you know, to hear them use that, that type of language and just demean people in that type of way really, um, I guess, just made me want to do something about it. Well, that's interesting, right? So, I mean, you're bringing, you know, traditionally, like, homophobic arena, all of this new kind of thought. So, as far as your teammates are concerned, was there backlash? Was it, what did they say when you were like, hey, man, you know, don't call him a fag, you know what I mean? Right. Well, um, it was actually really interesting and I think really surprising. You would think that there would be uh, a really negative backlash because it's a problem that's so prevalent in sports. But, um, you know, for me, as a, I was captain of my team, um, and in my eyes, the, the team that was going to achieve victory was going to be a team that was the most united. Right. right. And, um, you know, even the smallest amount of homophobia or transphobia in some way divides a team. You know, when you d diminish others, you diminish yourself. So um, I think that carrying, carrying this, uh, this message of respecting others, mm -hmm. of, you know, this is, this is about all of us moving forward together. And, um, and that means we're going to be mindful of how we speak to each other and how we speak uh, about other people. And that was something that I, I just have to say they were incredibly supportive of. It was awesome to see uh, a lot of people started to become more word conscious and it was you know that's why I think I'm continuing to to do more and speak to more athletes and really making a difference I think what most of the people here in the room want to know more about Hudson is the locker room <laughs> <laughs> am I right there you go it's the elephant in the, the pink wow. elephant in the room actually <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, no, I'm no not. but they're not kidding, right? Exactly. So now tell us a little bit about your training for the Olympics. What is, uh, and your coaching, you've got a lot going on. But tell us a little bit about the Olympics. And then also, guys, we're going to open up to a couple of questions. So get ready with your questions. But tell us about the Olympic training and what that entails. <laughs> well, it's in the lock. There's a lot yeah, of locker There's a locker room. room. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, actually, being a coach is, is a really good thing for me in terms of training because uh, I get to work out with our guys and train them every single day. So, um, you know, wrestling is a sport that I love. I've been doing it since I was six. Um, it's a part of who I am. It's uh, a, a large reason why I have the outlook I do on the world. And... Um, you know, I want to do everything I can to continue to be a part of it. And uh, for me, that's, that's competing. That's mm -hmm. um, trying to, I don't know, just, just keep wrestling, really. I mean, I, I love the sport. Um, I love the camaraderie and the, the sportsmanship of it. And uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's really have, amazing. Yeah. My brother was a wrestler also and uh, went to state, didn't win, but went to state uh, competitions. And we used to go and support him and, and my whole family. And if you've never been, probably a lot of you have been to wrestling matches, especially <laughs> yeah, that yeah. table. Well, but they're if you probably, haven't been... That table over there probably conducts some wrestling matches. Girl, right? Ron, don't <laughs> yeah, walk. Yeah. No. Um, it's a fascinating, uh, intense, really kind of intense yeah. sport. Do you, uh, 
How do you prepare for that? It, it, it's meant... Well, it's physical, obviously. Sure. <clears throat> sure. Um, mentally, though, <laughs> how do you... Uh, uh, you got to psych yourself out for that opponent and... and what do you do? I mean... <laughs> well, I think... Um, what if he's bigger than you? I mean, I know it's it, weight classes. The thing that's great about wrestling is I was never the strongest. I was never the fastest. I was never the most athletic. Um, I just always considered myself a student of the sport. Um, I'm always willing to learn more, always um, willing to admit that I don't know everything and that there's room for growth. So, um, you know, I think that that approach to my sport and just having patience and continuing to practice um, is, has been the reason why I continue to excel and I think why really anybody would excel at anything. Um, patience and practice. There you go. I'm going to go out to the, to the audience, out? but I do have one more question. I have, well, one question for me. So one of the first um, athletes that came out and wasn't even actually while he was in the sport, was after the sport, was Billy Bean. And those of you who don't know, he's a professional baseball player. He wrote a book, The Whole Nine Yards, and, and came out. He, I, I think actually one of the magazines wanted to out him, and he kind of beat them to the punch, So, which was great. Why do you think it took so long for us to get, like, you, you know, different athletes coming out and really fighting for that, and, and athletes, even straight athletes, fighting and, and for equality in the sport? Yeah, I think um, for a long time there, there's been a, a lack of awareness um, like I said before, I never had any out friends or people who were out in my family um, right. growing up. So it was an issue that I didn't think pertained to me as a, as a straight person, as an athlete. Um, I think more and more we're having, uh, we're seeing athletes come out. We're seeing um, positive portrayals of the LGBT community right. in the media, on TV. Um, I'm sure there's some gleeks out there. <laughs> um, no, um, not in this room. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that that, I, I think that, that has uh, a lot to do with it, that, that um, you know, the more people are aware that it's really not about anything other than treating people with respect, um, you know, I think that that's a major reason why you're going to see more and more people um, or athletes feel comfortable, will, will start feeling more and more comfortable coming out, and uh, hopefully more athletes will feel comfortable speaking out. Yeah.